Let me tell you a little bit about how it is to drive a Saturn Sky. Perhaps you have seen this vehicle on forums or Facebook groups. This is my Sky I've had for a little more than a year now, and I've taken it auto crossing a whole lot and had a lot of fun with it. But why should you drive one? How is it really to drive? And more importantly, how is it to drive with the stock turbo with the GM tune on it? And then after I get it swapped to an LS3 with about 480 horsepower, how is it to drive then? So the acceleration, I would say that the turbo in this car is very linear when it comes in. Uh, I've driven a friend's uh, Mitsubishi Evo 9, and that car is kind of like, it's not on turbo, and then it definitely is in turbo all of a sudden, and it takes off. It just makes a whoosh, and you can just feel when you get right into it. Uh, this car is definitely a more linear progression into the turbo. So the boost comes on, maximum power is like from three to 4,000 RPM. It's kind of steady, four, five, 6,000 RPM. Unfortunately, 6,000 RPM boost stops. I've had many autocrosses where I've just been uh, into the boost, into a good straight area where I just need to keep more speed or get more speed, and I can just feel the power just immediately halt once I hit 6,000 RPM. So obviously the acceleration is uh, nothing like a V8 is that just has a linear, just a completely flat torque graph from you know 1500 to redline uh, RPMs. This definitely goes up at you know a low amount of torque from 1500 to 3000 RPM at 3000 RPM. It just goes right up and you can just feel it go. I think, I've never tested this, I think this car feels faster than my LS1 Trans Am from 60 to 100 miles an hour. Uh, so in the right gear, so in uh, so in third gear, or maybe downshifting the second at the very top end of second. Anyways, going from 60 to 100 miles an hour feels faster in this car. It's obviously not as loud or raucous. The turbo engine is you know very muffled and quiet, um, being 500 pounds lighter than the Trans Am. I'm not going to say the acceleration is spectacular because obviously as a turbo engine, it doesn't have, I mean, it just has no get up and go from 1500 to 3000 RPM. What am I expecting out of a V8 car, a V8 engine in this car? I've been told that drivability will be really good, that these cars have more traction than you'd expect. I'm expecting that much horsepower in a car that's 500 pounds lighter than the Trans Am to be able to break the tires out pretty loose. Um, this car is going to feel like, like exponentially faster than, right? Like it's going to be, it's going to be louder and more raucous for sure, which is going to, those kind of things always kind of like change your senses of like, what do you sense your car's doing? I mean, I really want it to be zero to 60 in four point some seconds. Like if I can, if it can hook up, I want it to be that fast. I want it to be easy enough to drive at medium and low speeds that I am not always babying the accelerator. I'm a little worried that 480 horsepower like at the crank is almost too much. Like, is that is that more than this car can handle, right? If this car had a bunch of more torque, if this car had 400 foot pounds of torque across the board, is that enough? You know, I figured if I'm going to get an engine swap in this car, I may as well put more power in it right now than I think I need and kind of build up to it than uh, living another, you know, getting the engine, driving it for one year and still being like, gosh darn it, I'm really like missing out on some horsepower and I could go faster if I had more power, right? Like for autocross, I'm, I'm racing on 315s, big wide 315 tires, right? So my benchmark really is how good is it going to be at autocross to accelerate, to pull out of slow corners uh, and go for fastest time of day, essentially. Like that's my philosophy. I'm racing for fastest time of day. The day has arrived. It's a gray day in Pennsylvania right now, but it's gonna be dry for the ride, so 
anywhere from uh, seven and a half to nine and a half hours. Uh, not all the way to Oswego, but part way. So I'm cruising on the highway here. Cruise control at 70 miles an hour now. Uh, just did a little bit of a gaggle of some trucks back there. We're on some uh, very, uh, I'll say, hilly highways in Pennsylvania. Uh, trucks slowing down. You know, this car doesn't have a lack of torque, right? When you're on the highway cruising speed, uh, one gear down, get into the boost a little bit, and, and boy, it just takes off really nicely, right? Like, you cannot fault the car for that at all. Like, it's very uh, comfortable, has more than enough power to get passing uh, without a lot of drama. And I'm really happy with it, actually. It's a really great car, and part of me as I'm driving to uh, put an LS in this is like, why am I going to do that, right? Don't I have enough power? Well, I need more low-end torque for autocross. Like, that's the goal, right? So, uh, you know, if you are not in boost in this car, then you are not moving. You got to wait till you get into boost. So I need to remember that. But otherwise, for if you are not autocrossing, if you are not pushing this car to the limit and that you need a lot of uh, low-end power, you know, even if you were just like drag racing or you just want to street drive it, I think an LS is, might be overkill. Of course, I'll see when I get it back, but um, I don't think that for normal street driving that you would want a heck of a lot more power than uh, than what you get with the uh, GM or the Trifecta Tune on this car. Uh, you know, it feels plenty quick uh, uh, for most people, right? It's always the asterisk there, right? Everybody, you can always use more horsepower. So uh, let's not, let's not uh, kid ourselves that uh, not everybody, you know, that, that I don't want more horsepower. Uh, yeah, sure, I do. I just like the smoothness of it. Am I getting old? Maybe. Is it, is it like, oh, crap, I need to uh, have a car that's quiet and comfortable? Have I gotten out of that range where I'll just accept any vehicle that's, like, really round, loud and rattly? Um perhaps yeah perhaps maybe that time has actually come uh for me um you know but we'll we'll see when this car comes back uh what i think then it's 4 20 on tuesday afternoon not that that really means anything to me honestly uh knock on wood or anything this trip has gone really smoothly so far Performance Auto Works. Here's the clutch that's going in. Well, it's a little rough to see, but this is my engine here in the crate, literally the crate motor. Got the tour inside. Fortunately, couldn't take any video inside. You know, he's got other customers that don't want to have their stuff uh, on video necessarily, and I completely understand. Uh, so, you know, I saw the engine. The transmission isn't here yet. Uh, my clutch is here. Took a look at some of the other cars that they are working on. Uh, yeah. Here at PAW, it's September and the car is done. So I'm gonna give some of my initial thoughts while I'm here at this rest stop. It is, is much, much louder. Of course it's a V8, uh, but it sounds great. The burble on it and the exhaust note is just right. It is not too raspy. It doesn't sound like it's underwater, like some of those Corvette exhausts. Uh, you've heard it's not like super sharp and harsh like Ford exhaust. Man, it is just a nice exhaust note when you're on the throttle and when you're just sitting there. All right, let's see how this goes. I'm gonna start this puppy up and we're gonna roll out of this. 
service station. Why do people just have to park so close? Like there's literally 30 empty parking spaces and this SUV just pulls up right beside me and I'm already way off in the empty section. What the hell? Anyways, we're gonna get up on the highway and see if you can hear how it is. Here we go, starting in three, two, one. I'm just breaking the car in right now, so I don't even need to, to roll it all the way up to 7,000 RPM or anything. I can just short shift this, it's got so much torque. So much torque. I'm just putting along at 25 miles an hour. Coming on to the on-ramp for the highway. And we're gonna get to the good gravel. Off the bad gravel and onto the good pavement here. Three, two, one. Beautiful, brand new LS3 crate motor. This car has a lot of get up. A lot of get up. It's going to be very fast and on a cross. Man, this thing has so much power, it's like I have to recalibrate my brain as to what fast means. It just takes off and uh, well, it just keeps on going. You know, like the turbo had a lot of, a lot of power up top and it was just so quiet. It was really uh, kind of fooled you into not uh, understanding how fast you were going. But the LS, you know, makes a big growl and snarls a lot. And with the top down, man, you really feel the speed and you can hear the power. And uh, I tell you what, I swear to God, this must be twice as fast uh, as, as a turbo. I mean, with almost 500 horsepower, yeah, it better be a heck of a lot faster than the uh, turbo. With this, like, torque curve, just, pff, like, it's a plateau. It just goes straight across. It doesn't It doesn't let up at all. Uh, from 3,000 to, uh, I haven't even hit red line yet uh, in this, just breaking it in. You know, just power all the way across the RPM band. Uh, it's amazing. It's really amazing. It's a lot of fun. I swear to God, it's too much for some people. Some people, if you do not have experience driving a very high horsepower car or a muscle car, like, like I've driven, to have a, I've had a Trans Am for more than 20 years now, uh, you know, and kind of understand what a car with a light rear end and a lot of horsepower and maybe wheels that are too skinny uh, mean, right? This will get people in trouble because it's so easy to just make power anywhere and just put the hammer down and you could spin the tires really easily. I've been just feathering it and babying it and just roll into power. That's the most important thing, roll into power. Man, it's a lot, of, it's gotta be a lot of fun. It sounds great, it feels great. Man, this shifter is top notch. I, I guess people that have fifth and sixth gen Camaros have been using this for a while and man, it is a nice shifter. It is so mechanical and it just feels so great. And this shifter is fantastic. It is so mechanical, yet so precise. Can Hopefully this comes through. At the end of every gear stop, just has such a satisfying chunk. I mean, it's perfectly sprung left and right. Putting it in first gear, you know you're in first gear. Pulling it back to second, 
boom. If you want to pay money for good experiences in life, this is a good experience. This is a good manual transmission experience. And uh, at Autocross today, I had a friend sit in the car and uh, use the shifter as well. He's got a Porsche 718 GT4 Cayman, and he said this shifter feels better than his Porsche shifter does. That's high praise. This feels great. This is so much fun to, to, to go through the gears with. It just feels fantastic uh, when I'm driving it. Back in the garage after the first autocross test day for me the high temperature here was 40 or 45 degrees tires did not get any heat in them the pavement was cold it was overcast it was extremely chilly outside so it was extremely difficult to put power down spin in tires in uh at the start line and uh I left the, uh, I took the traction control off, but left stability control on, and I could feel it coming in a lot. 
Now, again, this is the first time that I've had the car in competition, driving it in anger. But I tell you what, I do not regret this LS swap at all. It is a katana. It is a weapon to just slice through cones and slice from one gate to another. It is extremely fast. Even with the cold tires today, I was just, again, shocked and amazed uh, at how, how well this car uh, can handle. When the temperature gets warm out, this is going to be amazing. Perhaps, just perhaps, 480 horsepower is too much. But then again, it was cold, and this was my first time driving it in competition, so I'm probably just going to have to get used to it a little bit more. I'll let you know next summer, after I've had a bunch of events under my belt with this car, temperatures have warmed up, tires are gripping, it'll probably be perfect. It's a lot of fun. It's going to be even more fun. I highly recommend it if you want more torque in your Kappa. LS is the way to go. This is a lot of fun. It's totally been worth every penny paid for it so far.